So I've been wanting to make this video for a little while now because I've been using an iPad Pro as my main form of computer since that 2018 iPad Pro revamp. I saw a beautiful pane of glass that had a bunch of raw and sheer power that had this instantaneous nature to it, USB-C was added, and I just fell in love, so I had to use it as my main form of computer, and I've been able to do that over the last six years. But I wanted to share with you guys like what I've learned over this time because it hasn't been all roses and rainbows. There are some downfalls to it, but there's one thing that I did think about, and to quote Shakespeare, funny enough, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but it's better than a master of one. And I think that completely sums up what the iPad Pro is, but let's unpack it a little bit. So I wanna give you guys my unbiased and honest review of the iPad Pro and my experience over the last six years. So it's not just gonna be the M4 iPad Pro, but it's gonna be the iPad holistically because I am gonna be talking about all the amazing things that I love about the iPad Pro and there's a lot of them, but there's also some downfalls and some pitfalls that kind of limit me from recommending the iPad Pro to the everyday person as their main computer, especially when they only have the budget for one machine, whether it is a MacBook Air or something like an iPad Pro. But to start off, I'm gonna start off with the good, what I love about it, and then we'll get into those downfalls and I'll leave some timestamps down below if you guys wanna jump around. But the first thing that kind of jumps out at you with the iPad Pro, or just any iPad for that matter, is going to be the versatility of this computer. Because obviously when you buy it, it's a tablet first, right? You open it up, all you get in the package, especially nowadays, is going to be the tablet itself. And that's what it is and that's what it's always been. It is a touch first interface and it's a beautiful display and that is how it was intended to be used. Right, it's not until you add something like the Apple Pencil that now you get to be a completely different machine like a digital notepad and it goes from just being a content consumption and finger touch first to, like I said, digital notepad, a digital note taking machine, but then also a creative machine for digital artwork. And then the Magic Keyboard came around, especially now the new one, and it completely revitalizes what the iPad Pro can be in terms of not only is it just a tablet and then a digital note-taking machine, but now it's a full-fledged computer in my opinion that has a full keyboard, it's got a beautiful trackpad. The OS experience, although different and when it comes to a point-and-click mouse situation, is still very familiar and can be used pretty much as a normal computer in most settings. So in my opinion, the iPad Pro is the most versatile computer that you can buy. I know that there's Windows 2-in-1s that flip around and become a touchscreen and things like that, but I've always found this to be a little bit janky. I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. And of course, on the macOS side, there is no other touchscreen interface for macOS. It's all going to be iPadOS based. Yes, you can use things like Sidecart to kind of mimic a touchscreen of macOS on your iPad, but for the most part, if you wanna have a great touch first experience, there's nowhere else to go than an iPad. And one great way to look at this is that people here, especially in the US, don't really say the word tablet. That when they're referring to a tablet, whether it is an Android one or an Apple one, they're calling it an iPad. And it's because Apple is synonymous with tablets, especially here in America. So that is when you know that Apple has done something right by completely taking over the market share of any and all tablets. So again, that's all anecdotal, but I'm gonna give you guys some actual specific examples, and I'm gonna go through different categories right now of what I love about the iPad Pro. So when it comes to productivity, what I've really learned is that Safari is going to be your best friend. Now, yes, the App Store is robust. You have access to millions and millions of applications, both that are for iOS and iPadOS, and they work great on the iPad, but sometimes from a productivity standpoint, you know, things like the mail application, even the Gmail application is not nearly as good as just going into Safari and going to the desktop version of Gmail. So I've learned that for a lot of my professional applications, aside from like LumaFusion to edit videos and Affinity Photo to make thumbnails, when it comes to my professional tasks like email, you know, maybe some Google Sheets stuff, I use Safari for a lot of that, even to manage my life in Notion and Sensama. All of that is done in Safari in the desktop version of that web page because with, I believe, iPadOS 16, maybe it was 17, but I think it was iPadOS 16, Apple gave us the ability to go to the full-fledged desktop version of these websites and support it through Safari. Now, you can use Chrome on the iPad itself, but Chrome still uses kind of like a mixture of mobile and desktop operating systems and web pages built in there. So I think the best experience, if you are somebody that wants to use your iPad and wants to be able to use it as much as you can as a normal computer, Safari is going to be your absolutely best friend. So definitely take that into account when you are looking for your applications, especially if they are web-based applications. Safari is actually amazing for that. And in that same light, when it comes to kind of mimicking what a macOS or desktop-like experience is like, Stage Manager is actually something that I use quite frequently, right? Stage Manager, in the very beginning when it came out with iPadOS 16, I believe, 
It was a little bit wonky. Like I understand, the, I understood the vision. They wanted to give iPadOS something like a windowing platform, something to be able to move multiple windows running around like you would on any other Mac OS or desktop kind of operating system, but they didn't want to make it one-to-one -one and they didn't want it to be Mac OS. So they had to give it its own form of it. But then iPadOS 17 really kind of leveled that up because it gave you a lot more malleability on the windows. It really felt like more of a free flowing window versus kind of restricted to different sizes with iPadOS 16. So Stage Manager has come a long way. So being able to have three or four different Safari windows open is very desktop-like and it works very well and it works honestly sometimes better than it would on any other Mac OS computer because it understands what you're trying to do when it comes to kind of hovering over different windows even if they are stacked over each other. So iPadOS Stage Manager combined with Safari as a desktop kind of class browser has been a great experience for those people that want to use the iPad Pro as a main form of computing. But to go back to that quote that I said earlier, the jack of all trades, but a master of none, I would say that the iPad is a master of versatility because it can be whatever you need it to be in whatever moment. And it doesn't, it isn't a master at any specific thing. Like yes, it can game, but is it the best portable gaming platform? Probably not, but it's still really good. Obviously it can be a computer, but is it the absolute best computer? For some people it is, for some people it's not. So it really depends on your personal use cases. Is it the best digital note-taking machine? Uh, it's probably pretty close, but there are some dedicated digital note-taking products out there that might be a little bit better. But again, everything on the iPad is pretty much 90% of the way there, and there's not many other computers that can get you all the way there, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem. I actually use this for gaming for a decent amount of things, right? I play a little bit of NBA 2K directly from Apple Arcade. With my Xbox controller, I'm able to then use it as a dummy display for my Xbox gaming console, which I have a whole video on if you guys want to check that out. So I'm able to play something like NCA 25 while using my iPad as a dummy display, right? I'm not cloud gaming or anything like that. This is a direct plug-in to the actual iPad itself. And then when it comes to content consumption, especially now with this new Tandem OLED, and now you don't need the latest and greatest to be able to just watch some nice Netflix like iPad mini, the iPad 10 generation will still give you some great quality, but that Tandem OLED on the new M4 iPad Pro is absolutely amazing for any type of content consumption consumption, whether it's something as like a simple YouTube video, a Dolby Atmos 4K video in Disney Plus, or even just like a small, you know, swipe through and TikTok and things like that. It's still an amazing content consumption machine. The iPad gets used in casual environments, right? It's used as a digital cookbook for my wife when she uses it in the kitchen. It's, every single night it's used as a baby monitor to, again, view the baby in her room while she's sleeping to make sure everything's okay. So it's got a lot of casual use cases where you don't need to max out that M4 iPad Pro to really get some quality use out of an iPad. And again, you can be using older iPads iPads, you can be using different iPads that are cheaper, and they can all run pretty much the same applications very easily. And then you've heard me talk about the creative use cases, right? Like I said, I use LumaFusion on a day-to-day -day basis to edit 4K 30 footage with multiple layers and a bunch of audio layers as well. Like I just edited something in a multicam studio and it handled it perfectly well. It's currently exporting a 36 gig video that's an hour and a half long and it's doing it extremely quickly because of the M4 power and it's just that raw instantaneous nature of an iPad Pro. And again, you can use any iPad to edit. Like I was using a 2018 iPad Pro. I know people that edit on iPad minis. Export speeds might vary at that point, but if you just want something to edit in real time, you don't really care about export speeds too much, pretty much any iPad can handle that. And then same thing goes with Affinity Photo and thumbnail creation. Being able to have Photoshop files be ported over into Affinity Photo, again, a jack of all trades in my opinion. And then you don't have to be a creative to use your iPad Pro. For instance, when that 2018 iPad Pro, I was actually working a normal tech sales job and I got the iPad Pro and fell in love with it in an environment where everybody used IBM ThinkPads. So what I did was I started to learn how to use the iPad with the Microsoft suite of products. So it was perfect for Microsoft Teams, for video chat, for Excel documents, for Word documents, for PowerPoint presentations. It handled all that beautifully. And honestly, Microsoft has put a lot of effort into their applications on iPad OS. So if you guys have not seen the Microsoft suite of products running on the iPad, I do highly recommend checking it out. I have some videos floating around. Now, if you're a master Excel user, obviously it's not gonna be one-to-one. -one. There are some things missing, but if you're a basic Excel user, it's more than capable enough to handle what you're trying to do on Microsoft Excel. And the last thing I do wanna mention is that instantaneous nature, which I did bring up earlier. So the instantaneous nature of iPad OS is because iPad OS was birthed, for lack of a better term, from iOS. And iOS is so instantaneous when it comes to opening up applications, quitting them, reloading them, moving around, having multiple opens. So it's taking all that and running it on iPad OS with a desktop class chip of the M4 iPad Pro. Again, that instantaneous nature will apply to even the A14 iPads, A15 iPads, and things like that. But if you want the latest and greatest, obviously the M4 is that much quicker. Everything just happens instantaneously and I've never had an issue when it comes to data loss. Even if something kind of freezes up maybe momentarily, I'll immediately quit out the app, 
open it right back up and it reboots and within two seconds I'm back exactly where I was in the middle of a super long video edit or in the middle of a very long PowerPoint presentation with no problems whatsoever. So again, I absolutely love the iPad for that reason. That versatility, in my opinion, is unmatched by any other computer on the market. So now you're probably asking me, Fernando, you've been talking about the iPad, you know, in nothing but an amazing light for the last few minutes. What are these downfalls and pitfalls that you're talking about? So the most obvious one is iPad OS. So iPad OS to a lot of people is, I think it just has a, a negative, not a negative stigma, but more so a situation where people think it's more of a playful operating system than it is a workhorse operating system, which is the farthest thing from the truth. If you sit there and use iPad OS for any amount of time, you know that from a raw power standpoint, it can handle anything. Now, getting from point A to point B from a productivity or work or even personal use case standpoint on the iPad is going to be a little bit different than if you are so used to Mac OS, but that's the case for any operating system. If you threw me directly into a Windows machine that I haven't used in years and years, it would take me a little while to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Yes, I can go to my email normally. Yes, I know how to open up Chrome, but same thing for minimal tasks apply for the iPad. Everybody knows how to open up a new Safari tab. Everybody knows how to open up an email. Everybody knows how to jump into their Slack. It's just those more kind of intensive tasks that you're gonna have to learn a new way to do it. And it's no different on the iPad versus Mac OS versus Windows versus you know iOS versus Android. You're gonna have to have a little bit of a learning curve because they are different operating systems. But I will say that the iPad OS situation is sort of in limbo because it's trying to be its own operating system, but still taking cues from Mac OS and iOS. So sometimes, Things are redundant for no reason. Sometimes there are multiple steps that could be reduced to less steps. So again, that's just a learning curve that you're gonna have to go through. And that's something that I have personally forced myself into because I love the versatility and the hardware so much that I was okay dealing with those downfalls. And to this day, I am. Like now I am faster on an iPad Pro than I am on any Mac OS or desktop machine. Another downfall that I tell people is going to have to be the price and the expense of an iPad Pro especially. Of course, you can go out and get yourself an iPad Air for like five or $600 and be good and that could be your throw around machine. But if you wanna fully go and deep dive into the iPad Pro ecosystem and make that your one and only computer, you're gonna be spending a pretty penny. For instance, I have a one terabyte M4 iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard and an Apple Pencil. And I think all in, it was almost $2,000. It was like $18.99 before tax. So at the end of the day, I was probably spending two grand on my setup, whereas you can literally get two MacBook Airs for that price, or you can get a very nice MacBook Pro for that price. So convincing people or letting people know like, hey, you can, instead of spending $2,000 on a MacBook Pro that's gonna be fully loaded and you're used to it and it's something that's convenient for you and you know how to use it, spend those $2,000 on an iPad. Some people, they're gonna be like, what? I'm not gonna spend $2,000 on an iPad, which makes total sense. I totally understand that because most people have a different viewpoint of what the iPad is versus what a Mac computer is. They see $2,000 for a Mac laptop and they think, you know what? That makes sense, that's worth it. It's a workhorse laptop, a computer that I'm gonna be using for years to come. Versus when they think of an iPad being $2,000, they think to themselves, why would I spend $2,000 on something to digitally draw on the notes or something to just view Netflix and YouTube on because people aren't thinking about it as a full-on computer. Once you start thinking about it as a full-on computer, then it starts to make sense a little bit in terms of what you're getting for those $2,000. So those are the two biggest pitfalls. It has to do with kind of the state of iPad OS and how it is a little bit in limbo and isn't fully aware of what it wants to be overall. And then obviously the expense of an iPad Pro specifically because those accessories, $350 for a keyboard accessory is pretty absurd when you start to think about it. And then the tablet itself, you're $1,300 in without updating a single gigabyte of storage internally or anything else. So again, I have a $2,000 setup on an iPad, which some people think is just a playful machine. Whereas I think it's an absolute productivity workhorse. So in six years of using the iPad Pro as my main computer, what I've learned is that the iPad Pro isn't going to be for everybody, but it's gonna be for more people than you think it is. I've seen a lot more people using iPad Pros as their main computer because it's more portable, it's easy to move around, it's a perfect laptop machine for your you know, airline travel, it's perfect to go on vacation with. Like you, maybe you have a desktop situation at home like with a Mac Mini or Mac Studio, and you can just take an iPad Pro with you on the go, and I think that's the perfect situation. Now I know not everybody is in a position to be able to get a computer and a tablet at that price point, but I do think that is what people are using it mostly for, for those on the go situations. And there are some you know, outliers like myself that use it for video editing and a lot of people use it for creativity and artwork and things like that. But those are specific niche use cases. Most people are gonna be using it for those kind of 
soft, minimal business tasks like emails, like Slack, communication, being able to pull up a PowerPoint and edit it on the fly. They might not make that PowerPoint to start off with on the iPad, but they'll edit it on the fly before a meeting or something like that. They'll take notes in a meeting in OneNote, in the notes application. Being able to manage your life, being able to use your iPad in all these different ways is what I've learned. It's the most versatile computer on the market. It's one of the easiest to pick up for casual use. And there is a learning curve if you are trying to use it for more business focused, revenue generating tasks if you're gonna make the iPad Pro your main computer. But that is my two cents. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what I've learned over the last six years because I love the iPad. I'm gonna continue to use the iPad as my main computer. There is a time and a place for me to use a MacBook Air from time to time. I have an M2 MacBook Air that I use a decent amount, but from 95% of my use when it comes to computing, I'm jumping to the iPad Pro because it's just a more fun machine, everybody. But that'll do it. If you guys made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And let me know in the comment down below what you think. Have you tried to go with the iPad Pro? Have you tried to use an iPad as your main and only computer? Or will the iPad forever be, you know, a tablet that your kid uses to watch Bluey on Disney Plus? That is the spectrum of use cases for different iPads. Whereas with the laptop, it doesn't have as many use cases and it's not for as many people, in my opinion. But that'll do it, everybody. If you want to watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here, and I think you're gonna like this video right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. iPad, it's the way to go.